Hello everyone. Today uh, we are still in Reykjavik in Iceland. We are here because of the City in Motion project, which is uh, made by the Institute of Civic Affairs. Today we will speak with Professor uh, Harpa Stefan Deer. Uh, good morning, with this, this Professor. And uh, we are speaking about the spatial planning, about uh, choosing the people made in the city, how do they move, uh, how do they, uh, how do, how do, uh, how, and how, how city should uh, develop its infrastructure, its uh, shape, its, uh, its landscape. Uh, tell me, what are your, uh, Miss Professor, what are your main issues uh, as a professor addressed at the field of spatial planning in Iceland and in other, uh, in, in other uh, countries? My, my field of research. Yes, field of yeah, research. I'm, uh, my field of research uh, has to do with uh, travel behavior and sustainability and also the experience of the users. And my special expertise uh, regards actually the aesthetic experience, how my it is to travel and how, what is the value of the quality of the surroundings. So I have been uh, mainly focusing on bicyclists and pedestrians, uh, but also I have been in big projects that has to do with the urban structure and travel behavior in general. Now I'm working on one project in Norway called Walk More, which has to do with how to plan for walking in small cities in Norway. So I'm doing this in collaboration with Transport Economic Institute in Oslo. And we have two more more years left in the project, um, which is uh, funded by the Norwegian Research Council. And thus, what what uh, what way of transport uh, are best for the city and for the citizens uh, for of the city? Do, do we should uh, promote? Uh, moving by cars or maybe by some other way of, of transport? We should actually aim at reducing the private car as much as possible. And uh, it's not only the pollution. Um, we have, of course, uh, huge challenges with climate change, but it's also the space the car uses and takes much more space than other transport modes and uh, giving much space to the car will uh, cause sprawl development which makes it even getting more and more distances, less and less density. So it it's, uh, it's stimulates development that's really unsustainable. So. Uh, uh, of course, it's best to walk because then we don't use anything else than our own uh, energy. But we can't walk very long distances. So then often the bike is a good choice. But then also it, it has limited um, how long distances we can make by bike. So then the, tra the public transport is next. So we should try to uh, uh, plan for these modes and not the car. We should actually limit the access and the convenience of using car. It's making cities... Uh, it, it's not only causing uh, fumes and uh, taking space, but it's also making the surroundings less attractive for the other modes. Like we don't want to walk along traffic uh, roads and just smell the fumes and uh, listen to the noise from the traffic. It's not yes. really not nice. It's very important. Yes. Yeah. 
people don't don't uh, often don't, don't care about it. And tell me what what uh, what kind of landscape, what kind of uh, seascape is uh, uh, is best to 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 to, um, to uh, make people use this ecological ways of transport. How how should we how should we make this kind of landscape? Mm -hmm. That's a good question because it's not the same for like pedestrians and cyclists. I, I did my PhD on bicycling and it had to do with uh, how the value of pleasant surroundings matter. But it, it's, it's not only that it should be pleasant, it's, uh, it's the functionality. So how does this work together? So it has to be both functional and nice, both for pedestrians and uh, cyclists. And, and you know, public transport, uh, the chain, travel chain by public transport, then you walk as well. So it's linked. Uh, for bicycling, it's very important that you can bicycle if you are going for utilitarian purpose uh, that you can bicycle bicycle like continuously that you don't have to stop all the time and wait for traffic lights or then you have to actually to start pedaling again you use extra effort it's it's somehow against the nature of cycling so making it uh, Easy to bicycle, it should be like uh, continuous routes. Uh, it means that if there are like roads or something, uh, either they, there should be green waves so you don't have to stop, or there is really broad uh, underground tunnel so you can just go under very easily without having to stop. And then also, uh, it should be like green and uh, something nice to experience on the way. For pedestrians, it's a little bit different because uh, you are not using any vehicle when you are walking. You can turn around and stop easily whenever. And it, it's uh, you are walking but slower, so uh, it it should be more like rich. Uh, uh, like the public spaces, there should be more to experience. You are able to perceive in much more detail, uh, seeing other people, uh, we call it strolling. You are like walking informally, like in the city center, and you just suddenly decide to go into a shop or something. This is not what you do when you're on the bike. So it's different, yeah, yeah. different modes. Uh, Public transport, uh, it's also important that it's uh, in comparison to the car uh, more convenient and uh, faster altogether than I mean the travel time from the beginning to the end, that it's made easier to choose the public transport so that you get quicker to your destination than with the car. So it should be made difficult to use the car. Uh, it should take more time and be more inconvenient. For example, uh, if parking is made difficult, if it's more expensive, you get maybe you have um, Tolls on the way, or um, if you are just sitting there in your car and you see the public transport, just then the choice is easier. And it doesn't take that much space as the car. Yeah, so yeah. the time is the key. The time of uh, the time of of the uh, of the journey is uh, the key to public it transport. It's one one one. One of the things, it's very important, uh, we call it rationals. What is behind? Not only. 
Not only no, there are Bangkok. many. There are many, and they might be different from one city to another. But uh, where I have been investigating, like in Norway and in Iceland, mm -hmm. people make choices. Uh, the most important rationale that we say, what's behind the reason for a choice, that's the travel time. Then everything is included from uh, how long time does it take to walk to your station, if it's difficult to park, it lengthens your mm -hmm. travel time by car, for example. If you sit in, in the jam, it lengthens your time. But it's all, not all, only these things, it's also how convenient it is. For example, if you are walking or bicycling, and we are using our own effort, physical effort. And if, if the infrastructure is so that you have to use extra effort, like going a lot of staircases uh, to a tunnel or to a bridge, uh, which is of course uh, more difficult, it, you will use extra effort and then to make it easier for the cars. What message is that giving? It's, it's, the surroundings are giving the pedestrian the message that we, we plan on design for the car and we are making it more difficult for you. That's nice. So, so we need to prioritize all the way in the design. We, we give the message by how we design the surroundings. So uh, there are other rationales, for example, uh, the aesthetics of the surroundings. We call it secondary rationale because, um, let's say, if you're walking, then main, one of the main rationales is, is the distance, how far it is to walk. Uh, if it's possible with the time limit you have and the effort you have available. But then there are other things that matter that don't directly uh, play the most important role for your decision, but uh, has important impact. And that's why it's secondary. Uh, the aesthetics so are aesthetics one of the, is second. the. It's a secondary. It's not the most important, but it's also important. Not the price of, of uh, for example, the price of of, of uh, ticket to the bus, uh, but aesthetics. Yeah. Uh, so it has to be nice to walk or bicycle as well. Uh, uh, if you think about the needs of the pedestrian or cyclists. Uh, I, I talked about what they perceive, it has to do with the travel speed. I mean the pedestrians perceive more detail than the bicyclist. It's like how much can it perceive per second or something, if you take it that way. Uh, so you, you need more details for the pedestrian environment uh, so that it's stimulating them. The, it's actually in the way, but you have to have something nice to experience, like, uh, well, environmental psychology uh, has again and again showed that uh, green no, is, is important. Um, the walking should not be boring. It should not be boring, yeah. But you know, all, all the things are functionally working, like you have the payment. Yes. Uh, it can be boring anyway. So uh, and they, it ha doesn't necessarily only have to do with safety, because something that's safe can be boring. Yes. Yeah. What to do to, so as uh, the, uh, the pedestrians uh, could not be boring? Uh, what, what exactly should we do? <laughs> it is about this the greenery uh, or about uh, something else? What, what, is the, what is the most, most important thing that we should do in the cities? So as uh, the walking is not boring. Mm -hmm. But it, it's uh, all the same. Uh, there are many things you gain with the same issue. I was talking about the car traffic. So if you have less car traffic, then it's more aesthetically pleasing for the others. So you should, of course, reduce the car traffic uh, 
So walking through the highway, walking uh, along the highway would be boring. It's, it's both boring, and, boring. Uh, uh, and uh, uncomfortable. Yes, yeah. it would be more boring and uncomfortable. So. Of course, it would be better to have nicer routes not along the highways, but uh, through more green areas. Yes. Um, for pedestrians, uh, often street life, vibrant, is interesting. Vibrant is not necessarily interesting for the bicyclist because the pedestrians that will walk in, in your way, they will uh, make it more complicated to bicycle continuously. Yes. So it, it, it's, it should be more simple for the bicyclists. Yes, yeah, so sometimes it's good to separate the movement of, uh, of uh, cyclists and, yeah. and pedestrians yeah. because they are they have just difficult needs. They have difficult, different needs, very different needs. Yeah. Not, all, not only because of, of the safety, but of, of the difficult needs of that. Okay, uh, so uh, how do you feel, what do you think about the, pro, uh, the projects in, uh, project in, uh, in uh, Reykjavik, uh, the project of making a new uh, motorway uh, along the coastway? Is it a good uh, good idea to, to, to make the uh, the place the space between uh, the, the town and the and the sea uh, the place for for the uh, for the cars? <laughs> provocative uh, place. You, you are I think you know about this new, new big bridge they want to make. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Well. Uh, I think also we need really much to take climate change seriously. Um, um, we should try to do as little as possible, build as little as possible, um, uh, focus on uh, how we can enjoy life and live our life uh, in a simpler way. And of course, bicycling and um, walking is part of that. Try to emphasize what's close by our neighborhoods. Um, uh, we should think about it ten times before we start building something big, like big roads or bridges or... So, uh, yeah. Uh, we have no right to destroy nature like uh, the coastal line or... And of course it will make uh, the possibilities to, for example, bicycle along this coastal line much worse. Yeah, that's uh, right. And this is... To, uh, bicycling tourism is really growing. Yes. And, uh, yeah, it's yeah, fantastic, is... you can... Uh, you can uh, experience these surroundings uh, in a completely different way from the seat of the bike than when you're sitting in the car. If, if you haven't tried them, I recommend. So, so the, the city which is friendly for cyclists and pedestrians yeah. yeah. is also city friendly for tourists who wants to experience the landscape, experience the city. Is it true? Yes, yes, of course. Very much. But we can anyway ask uh, what kind of tourism we want in the future. We should not have that much flying. It's, uh, maybe we should try them to... If, well, tourism in itself is not sustainable. It's environmentally friendly, unfriendly business. But if they come here, yeah. we wanted them to... For, for example, more to, to, to go by bicycle or by the foot, not, not only by cars. Yeah, I think that would be better to uh, emphasize more that kind of tourism, that, uh, that you can use public transport to some places and then you can hike or bicycle. And uh, uh, not that much driving, yeah. Yes. And of course in Iceland bicycling it's fantastic. 
Yes, I expect uh, lots of you know. yes. <laughs> yes, 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 it is, uh, it was great to, to cycle through the recreation areas of the, of the Reykjavik. Uh, I, I must say yes, it, it, it was great. And uh, you, uh, you, you mentioned that you are living in, uh, in Reykjavik, not only in Reykjavik, but also in Oslo, and uh, make some uh, researches in Oslo. And if you could uh, compare the Reykjavik and Oslo, what are the main similarities and differences between Reykjavik and Oslo, with, when we're uh, talking about, about uh, being eco-friendly city and, and the design of the city which is friendly for, uh, for uh, um, ecological ways of transport? Uh, well, I don't live in Oslo anymore now. I've been living there the last 12 years until next, last autumn. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Oslo is... Uh, there are about 1 million inhabitants in Oslo. And here we have 250,000 or something in, in the Reykjavik capital area. So it's very different size of city and maybe Reykjavik is similar to, more similar to uh, Scandinavian cities that are in the same size. So this uh, the level of density uh, and uh, that matters a lot. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Reykjavik was built uh, after the Second World War. Uh, it started to grow. Before that, it was really, really small. We do, we have only really small uh, old part here in Reykjavik, which is denser. So uh, the area emerged more or less after the private car came to history, like as a, an option, private option. So uh, the master plan of 1960, for example, it was a big change here. So more or less the area is built after the emergence of the car. So it's it's car dependent city uh, and sprawl out and it, it's difficult for this reason to, to, change it. to change it. It's difficult to run public transport because there are too few people that it stuck to, yes. to go in. Oslo is, uh, they have, uh, it's of course much bigger society. They have been working on for some decades, maybe 30 years or something on limiting car traffic in the city and they have actually had very good success uh, so now the central areas are uh, based on uh, that you walk they, they are improving uh, conditions for cycling a lot now uh, the public transport is really good so uh, living in central areas of Oslo, the car is actually uh, in the way it's better not to have a car and just to use yeah. other modes. And it's actually, in my opinion, it's much nicer life. <laughs> it's, nice. it's much nicer life because uh, the public spaces are green uh, there is no there is uh, less fuel uh, the the pollution in oslo has got down one or two percent it can be measured and uh, they're all uh, getting more and more public spaces that are car free the streets are closing and it's really nice city to be in so, uh, yeah, who likes to uh, sit on a cafe or walk along where there is a lot of traffic? It's not nice. Yes. So, of course, we want to be like people in the public space and have it clean. This is what you get if you get rid of the car.
Yeah, so, Go to Austria and see. So this is your, so we can say that the Reykjavik or your dreams uh, is the Reykjavik full of green and less cars yeah. and more bicycles yeah. and more pedestrian friendly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think I think you can you can it can be the success with it. So we are. Uh, our town is also changing, and then there are many people who want uh, who share the same the same dream uh, as you uh, in in which, uh, So the, and then I think there are people all over the world who who, who share the the same dream. Uh, so we must uh, cooperate. We must help each other to but make this dream come true. But you know, planning has to make uh, this possible. You have to work on this step by step to make the changes. Because you cannot just tell people to uh, make a shift. You have to make it possible for people to make the change. People have to uh, be able to go to their job or they have to be able to go to their shop and do their uh, necessary daily activities in, in uh, a convenient way. So that's the role of planning uh, and the design and the, the governance to make this possible. That's right. Yeah. Thank you very, very much for thank the interview. Uh, thank you. There was the, uh, there was the interview with Professor Harper Stanford. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Goodbye. Yeah.